Today, I'm gonna to do the impossible. Explain interest rates to you in a way that even a child would understand. I'll be explaining complicated topics like global finance and even teaching you about the economy in a way that your school never did. Also that you can be smarter and make more money in the long run. So imagine for a second that you're in a huge mansion with a bunch of rooms. Each room represents a different part of the economy. There's one room for housing, there's one for manufacturing, another one for tech, and so on and so forth. And the temperature in each of these rooms represents how active or how heated up these different sectors of the economy are. Now let's say there's a homeowner who controls the thermostat for the entire mansion. This homeowner can turn up the heat when it gets too cold or turn down the heat when it gets too hot. This homeowner in our metaphor is the Federal Reserve, often just called the Fed. And the temperature that they're adjusting with a the thermostat, that's the interest rate. The Fed adjusts interest rates to keep the economy stable, the same way that a homeowner adjusts the thermostat to keep the house comfortable. Lower interest rates are like turning up the heat, making the economy more active, and higher interest rates are like turning down the heat, cooling the economy down. You can kind of think of it as the hotter it gets, the more people want to move around and create activity. And then the colder it gets, the more people want to shelter in place. And there's not as much activity or people crossing room to room across this mansion. And in this metaphor, you and I, we're just little kids living in this mansion. We have no control over the thermostat and we're very affected by the temperature changes that the Federal Reserve sets. So now that we have a basic understanding of interest rates and how it heats up and cools down the economy, next let's dig a little bit deeper. Just like the homeowner controls the thermostat, the Federal Reserve controls the economy by adjusting interest rates. But what exactly does this mean? Interest rates are the cost of borrowing money. You can kind of think of it as the price of money. So if you borrow $100 from a bank at a 5% interest rate, you'll have to pay back that $100 plus $5 in interest. So what happens when the Fed, our homeowner, turns up the heat by lowering interest rates? When interest rates are low, it's cheaper to borrow money. If you borrow $100 from a bank at a 1% interest rate, you'll only have to pay back $101 instead of $105 in that last example. Lower costs might encourage you or me to take out a mortgage to buy a house or to get a loan for a car. All this borrowing and spending heats up the economy, making it more active. It's like throwing a huge Project X style house party. On the other hand, when the Fed raises interest rates or turns down the heat, borrowing money becomes more expensive. If I wanna borrow $100 from the bank and the interest rate is 15%, I'll have to pay $115 back. Businesses might have to hold off on expansion plans because the loans are too expensive. Maybe you or I decide not to buy that house or that car because the interest rate on the loan is too high. This cools down the economy and less people people are willing to travel from room to room in our giant mansion. It's kind of like the cops showed up to our insane house party and shut the whole thing down. But remember, just like you wouldn't want your house to be too warm or too cold, the Fed doesn't want the economy to be too active or too slow. Sometimes they want a party, but just not a crazy Project X style party. And sometimes they want to cool the party off, but they don't want to call the cops. It's all about finding that comfortable temperature or that balance in the economy. But what happens when that balance is upset? Our homeowner, the Fed, has a powerful tool at their disposal, the thermostat, or in the real world, the power to adjust interest rates. But how exactly does the Fed do this? It's a little more complicated than just turning a dial, but let's simplify it. The Federal Reserve can increase or decrease the amount of dollars in the economy. When the Fed wants to turn up the heat, it prints more money, which effectively lowers interest rates. This is like adding more logs to a fire to make the house warmer. And when the Fed wants to cool things down, it decreases the money supply or the number of dollars, basically, which effectively raises interest rates. This is like opening up a window in the house and letting in some cool air. But here's where it gets a little bit tricky. The Federal Reserve, while trying to do what's best for the economy, they're just one entity, one group of people making decisions that influence everyone else in the house. They decide the temperature of the economy, affecting how much things cost, how much people earn, and how much money is worth. In 2023, the Federal Reserve, faced with the threat of inflation, turned down the heat drastically by hiking up the interest rates. Basically, instead of just opening up the windows, they dumped snow into every room in the house. Or in our Project X example, instead of calling the cops to break up the party, they called in the CIA. This sharp sharp change in the temperature had very serious consequences for our economy. When the Fed dumped in all that snow, the house got uncomfortably cold very fast. In the economy, this resulted in a banking crisis, which caused a lot of financial discomfort. They basically told the banks two years ago, hey guys, we're gonna open the windows in the next five years. And then three months later, the windows were fully open, there was snow in every room, and there were packs of hungry snow dogs marauding around the mansion. This single decision by the Fed impacted everyone, including large companies 
companies like Apple and Microsoft and even small investors like you and me. And it's a perfect example of how powerful and influential the Federal Reserve is. It also raises questions whether it's right to have one entity have so much control over the economy, over our house's temperature. After all, in a real house, shouldn't everyone that's living there have some say over the thermostat setting? If you've ever lived in a house where one guy controls the thermostat and everyone else has to live with that one guy's decisions, it's pretty frustrating. Some of the rooms are too hot, other rooms are too cold, and no one is completely comfortable. And that situation is not too different from how the Federal Reserve controls the temperature of our economy. See, when the Federal Reserve decides to adjust the thermostat or our interest rates, it affects everybody. Like we talked about earlier, in 2023, the Federal Reserve raised their interest rates higher and faster than they indicated that they would. Now the house is freezing cold and there's a few rooms where there used to be banks that now there's just packs of white walkers who have eaten all the banks. And now you might ask, why did the Fed allow white walkers to come into our house? And it's because the Fed was afraid of inflation, which is basically everything getting too hot. Our house was hotter than it had been in 50 years. People were running from room to room, borrowing money and never paying it back. But in their effort to cool things down, the Fed might have overdone it. And now instead of the house being borderline on fire, Credit Suisse is over there getting its brains eaten by the Night King. And the fact that the Fed was even allowed to let white walkers into our house to eat the banks shows the danger of having one guy in control of something as precious as the thermostat. It's not only unfair, but it can lead to decisions that are not really in everyone's best interest. Credit Suisse, for example, would have been very happy to not have their brains being eaten by the Night King. The question that arises then is, is there a better way to manage the temperature of our economy? So let's switch gears for a minute. You know how our homeowner has complete control over the thermostat? What if we could make that process just a little bit more predictable? Like having some kind of automated system, a smart thermostat that adjusts itself according to a preset schedule. This smart thermostat would be aware of the seasons and it would know exactly when to increase or decrease the heat. It would be reliable, consistent, and programmatic. And this is a lot like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is basically a smart thermostat thermostat. It's not managed by one person or a group of people that can change their minds. Instead, it follows a clear set of rules known to everyone. Just like a smart thermostat understands that there are four seasons, Bitcoin understands that there should only ever be 21 million Bitcoins. And the creation of new Bitcoins is designed to slow down over time in a public issuance schedule that is available to everyone. This system ensures that no one can suddenly crank up the heat and set our house on fire, and also that no one is going to let any white walkers in to murder Silicon Valley banks. Bitcoin's goal is to provide a fair and predictable way to handle money. So the next time you get a loan for a car or for a house and you have to go talk to a white walker wearing a suit who's offering you a 20% interest rate, just know that it doesn't have to be this way. Know that we can opt out and put a smart thermostat in any room of our house and that we don't need to live under the thermostat tyranny of the Federal Reserve. If this video helped you learn something, go down below and share it with your friends who need to learn more about interest rates and the role of the Fed. Comment down below if you have any questions or if I lost you at any point, I do still respond to all the comments. Check out this video over here for more economics explained easy and check out these videos over here to learn more about my thoughts on Bitcoin. I love you all. See you next week. And then three months later, all the windows were open, there was snow in every room, and there were packs of rabid snow dogs. <laughs>